The title I have chosen for my talk this morning is called The Victor's Mentality. I don't believe that anyone is a born loser. I believe we are all destined to win. We all have a dangerous DNA to succeed because Christ Jesus lives on the inside of us. We all have a spiritual DNA to be victorious. Winning is one of the themes that threads itself through the Bible. The language I have come across is it talks about victory, overcoming and being a conqueror. The Bible also uses the metaphor of being an athlete in a race. I would like to share a few verses that this alludes to. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24, do, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives a prize, so run that you may obtain it? Philippians 3, verse 13 to 14. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but the one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call in God, in Christ Jesus. The English definition of the word competition is to strive or win something by defeating or establishing superiority over others. And I think this is our idea in the Western world, what it means. However, the Latin meaning which comes from the late 17th century, means something entirely different. Our word competition is rooted in the Latin word competere, and you must forgive my Latin, I'm not very good at it. And this means, which means to strive together, to push one another along. Winning and losing are the natural result of playing sports. Almost every sport has a winner and a loser. Through having both these, we are pushed to improve, to be faster, higher and stronger, but we do it together. This is what the Bible encourages us to do, to push each other along, to live a life on a higher level. <coughs> and I actually prefer that meaning. There are also many verses on having victory, triumphing and overcoming. Here are just a few. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57, it says, But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8 verse 37 says, No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours, through Christ who loved us. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 20 verse 4 says, For the Lord is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. And what I think what I'm going to do is I want to look at Romans 8 verse 7, verse 37. Aha. Aha. I thought I had it right. And it says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I 
Because of God's love, we are more than a conqueror. We have victory over every temptation and every spiritual assault through the power of Christ that is in us. We do not just have victory, we have overwhelming victory through Christ in us. We are winners in every area of our lives because the Holy Spirit fills us and empowers us. We are winners day to day, moment by moment, because Christ lives in us. The Holy Spirit guides us, fills us, strengthens us. We have the mind of Christ and his power living in us. No matter what the enemy throws at us, we have victory. And look at that verse again. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. And I really want to get that, drum that in this morning. I would also like to look at this verse in two other versions, the Mirror Translation and the Passion Translation. In the Mirror Translation it says, on the contrary, in the thick of these things, our triumph remains beyond dispute. His love has placed us above the reach of any onslaught. The one who loves us completely makes us more than a conqueror in every area of our lives. We are undisputed champions because of God's love. In the Passion Translation it says, Yet even in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them all, for God has made us to be more than conquerors, and his demonstrated love is our glorious victory over everything. I do not know about you, but the, the enemy seems to attack me in all different ways, all at once. Sometimes it's through situations in my family, in my health, or when I've been hurt. It seems I'm in the thick of it. God's truth is this, that we are valuable. His truth says we are loved. So regardless of the situation, or when we get hurt by other people, we can live in freedom. Why? Because God loves us and sees us as a winner in him. And as a result of this, we can make these confessions. In Jesus, I have overwhelming victory. I do not fear death because Jesus conquered it. I have victory over fear, worry and temptation. I have overcome every attack of Satan through Christ in me. Jesus empowers me and fills me with his spirit. Today I am more than a conqueror. I am valuable and loved no matter what has been done to me. And at this point I would like to look at the temptation of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. And I'm just going to read. I'm going to... Um, Read the, read the account. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, Command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, 
All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. In this account of Jesus being tempted by the devil, scripture is clearly used first by the devil, then by Jesus. What I want to bring out of this is that when the devil spoke to Jesus, Jesus responded by saying, it is written. He says this three times. The devil tempted Christ because he wanted Jesus to doubt his identity as God's son. Jesus responded to the devil's lies by saying, it is written. These words are not supernatural words. Jesus knew the word. He used plain and simple language to convey it. This is what I want to bring across, that when we are tempted to give up, or we start doubting that God loves us and who we are in Christ, we need to speak the word of God out of our mouths. God's word in our mouths is our spiritual weapon. Romans 8 verse 37 to 39 is a good word to speak out when we feel under attack. We can say, it is written, nothing can separate me from God's love. I am more than a conqueror. Overwhelming victory is mine. We can talk back to the devil. Jesus spoke back to the devil, so why can't we? Other affirmations we can use about ourselves is I am a powerful, confident person. I'm going to achieve my goals. The great boxer Muhammad Ali said, I told myself I was the greatest even before I knew I was. <laughs> even though we may be struggling with that we are winners and more than conquerors, we can say it of ourselves even before we properly know it. This is the truth about us. We need to come into agreement with the word of truth. Also, another way to develop a winning mindset is to surround ourselves with people who love us. Iron sharpens iron. Ditch the negative people that constantly put us down. We can all be in a relationship that sucks the life out of us. Negative friends can rob us of our happiness and peace of mind. They can also rob us of the ability to progress towards our greatest potential. Find people who see your potential, who will empower you to go on to the next level. Another point I want to bring out is to be in a constant state of gratitude. It is what will help when we when the going gets tough. You were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win, expect to win. As well as these, having consistency is also a key to winning. We have all heard the phrase, practice makes perfect. It is a phrase I have known since I was a child. When we put these principles that I have shared in my message into practice daily, our efforts, even though we may feel they are very small, will reap much success. We all have a faith muscle, and regular exercise of it will help to keep it strong. Faith is not a magical force that only spe special people have, and they were not included in that list. God does not have favourites. Everyone is his favourite. Yeah. Two sure ways to build up our faith muscle are knowing God's word and prayer. These two go hand in hand. Romans 10 verse 17 
says, So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. To exercise our faith muscle, we begin to read. We must begin to read and hear scripture. Additionally, we should make Bible study a lifelong habit. Next, I want to talk about prayer. In Colossians 4 verse 2, it says, Devote yourself to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. And I've already mentioned earlier about having an attitude of gratitude. Prayer takes time, self-discipline and focus. And this is no easy task. Finding a daily time, staying alert and awake and keeping our mind from wandering is a challenge to us all. We all need to persevere and have diligence. Finally, remembering the prophetic words that have been spoken to us in the past is a good way to develop our faith and cultivate a winning mindset. One of the words I have received is that I am a yes, I can do it person. The word, this word has really impacted my life and really propelled me to, to push through my limitations. It has birthed in me to have a winner mindset every day. Some days I do not feel like a winner, but I am now trying to say I am a yes, I can do it person. Daily, I'm, I'm do it daily, no matter what my thoughts tell me or the lies the devil tells me. I also tell myself daily that I am a person of worth, value and integrity even though my mistakes of the past scream out something different. And I'm just going to, I want to um, quote, before I finish, I just want to quote that uh, quotation by Muhammad Ali. He said, I told myself I was the greatest even before I knew I was. And if you forget everything else that I've shared this morning, I want you to remember that. So that's me finished. Oh. <laughs>